seems like Arlington asked for their usual May through September dates. Tim is over there February, March, April, and, and Hawthorne and uh, the end of the year. And I said, well, okay, no need for a hearing. We'll be done. But then I look further, and Arlington doesn't just say, these are the dates we want. They come out and say, and oh, by the way, we don't want Hawthorne to run. We don't want them to have their dates. I never heard of that before. I've never heard of that being done anywhere in the country, that they would say, well, here's what we want, but by the way, we're going to show this board, we don't want them to have their dates. So I said, well, why is that possible? How could that be? Because for the last, as far as any memory could go back, 40, 50 years, I don't know how long, we'll have to look. This board, as a matter of public policy, the legislature, this governor, governors before him, boards that have Republican tilt, boards that have Democrat tilt, uh, uh, downstate, upstate, it's always been that we want year-round racing. I mean, racing is here not so a track owner could make money or big, big rich guys who own horses could make money. It's here because it's an industry. It's jobs. It's economic impact. Arlington's doing 60 million. Hawthorne's doing 40. It's 100 million dollars worth of industry. Then what the trainers make, the owners make, the vets, hundreds of millions of dollars in economic impact. That's what horse racing is about. It's not the few dollars the racing board gets, 10, 12 million for their budget. It's the millions and dozens of jobs and economic impact. Everybody knows that. Let me tell you this. This hearing is not about purses. I want to make that clear. It's not about purses. We're going to probably, and your staff will tell you this, and we're probably going to have 25 million that we're going to give away this year, not counting the impact fee. And it'll be 25, 30 million, whatever it's going to be next year. It's just a conjecture. And that's given away. That's industry wide. Whether Hawthorne runs all of it, Arlington runs all of it. Uh, AD, now, of course, everybody will tell you, including your staff, that you, you increase purses when you run live. More people go to the ADWs. I'm, I'm sorry. More people go to the OTBs when you have in-state live racing up here up north. More people go. You raise more money for purses with live racing. So now, Tim's going to get up there, and Tim's going to say what he did for 20 13, 2012, 2014, what he's going to go for 2050. For those of you who don't know, that means Tim Carey, the general manager of Hawthorne. So he's going to come up there and he's going to say how, with stiff competition, just as stiff as Arlington, he'll tell you who they are, Oakland, Santa Anita, Keeneland, the people who know horse racing know, they're giving away twice as much as what Tim's giving away. Hawthorne's giving, they got all kinds of nice things that they're going to store, racing, a bunch of stuff, slots, that makes it where, that makes it very difficult to compete. But Tim's done it. Over the last three, four, five years, he's done it. As a matter of fact, his family has done it for 103 years. Maybe even 105, I don't know. His, your mother says she might know. But 105 years, this family's done it year in, year out. All these red herrings, we don't know if he's financially stuck. We got Z-score, X-score, I don't know what we're going to have up here. But the point is, year in, year out, he performs. He keeps his people working, doesn't lay people off, does his job always pays his bill. Never, ever, ever, ever been sued for non-payment of a bill. It's a red herring about his financials. He's able to do it. You can dig into him. That's your job. And you should do it. But he'll show you year after year. Hey, we're like horse players. You look at a form. He's done it year after year. He's going to do it this year also. Maybe this year, because I don't even know what's coming. Maybe this year, with the millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars that CDI makes, their free money, what Arlington made, the $50 million in, in, in money that they made from, from the uh, impact fee and the 10th, 10th license, and even money they've made since ADW, CDI owns their ADW platform, and Tim's made $36 million over that same time, that the $72 million they made, that what they do is they would have new and innovative ideas. They'd come up with something today. And I'm hoping when they go through their 20, 30 slides, 15 slides, we're going to see these ideas, these wonderful, innovative ideas that all these people from CDI, great company, their stock's going through the roof, they're going to have such great ideas that we're going to see them how we're racing. Now, I got a little nervous over the past year and a half. When they knew this was coming, I got nervous. And you know why? Because Arlington, with everything they have in CDI, I thought they would call a meeting. Let's get all the stakeholders together. Let's have a special meeting. Let's come together and see what we could do when this impact fee ends. 
Let's put our heads together. Let's see how we keep everybody working. Everybody there, Hawthorne, 103 year company, us, try to keep us there. Let's all get, let's get the chairman, let's get the board members, let's get all the unions, all, let's get together and figure it out. But no, that didn't happen. So I'm going to see when their slides come what their plan is. My guess is, and I hope I'm wrong, that we're going to see nothing, that they have no plan. That basically what they're going to come up here, and this is what I still don't believe they do this year after year, they're going to go up there slide after slide going after Hawthorne. And they're going to go up there and tell you how they do better than Hawthorne. No kidding. You run five months out of the year in the summer. That's like Saratoga in July and August does better than Aqueduct in January and February. I know that. The whole world knows that. You're going to show us 15, 20 slides. Oh, we do more taxes. We have more admissions. We do what it versus. We Okay, let us run in the summer. We'll show you what we can do. Let's trade places. Let's see how you do in February. So, but, but what we did was we made sure we had year-round racing, just like New York, just like they do in Kentucky. New York, absolutely, Belmont and Saratoga, they need Aqueduct. Churchill Downs needs Turfway Park and Ellis. And we'll show you how, whether, to contrary to them, I don't know what they're going to do, but they need Hawthorne and we need Arlington. Over the last three years, what what's has transpired in the industry in terms of the impact fee and, and really um, what the legislation has done for the racing industry. And as you can see, um, you know, Arlington Park here has received, you know, $72 million of legislative initiatives um, to Hawthorne's $36 million. And, and so um, it's two times the amount of, of what we've actually received um, in, in terms of their uh, benefit to the industry. Every year we house um, all the horsemen. Um, we... we um, of all the water bills and, and, and we keep the tractors, the heralds going 24-7 um, um, because when it gets cold, if it snows, if it, you know, a sleet, rain, snow, whatever the case may be, um, we, we run those tractors 24-7 to make sure that the race, or the, um, the track doesn't ball up on us and we lose the track. Um, and so what we do is um, those tractors are running 24-7 uh, so that we can train as well as race. And um, this year, um, as everyone knows, the, the infamous polar vortex, um, you know, I think GNP was down 3%, no one came out of their houses, whatever the case may be. Um, we continued to race and, and we trained and um, it was just more expensive for us this year than, than prior years. Um, and so that's reflective in these numbers. In 2013 and 2014, the dates, the host days were the same year to year. Um, what we did was we, we picked up three dark host days during that January, February time frame, but Arlington Park picked up um, three um, host days during the April time frame. So from 2013, 2014, the host days stayed the same, and what we're suggesting in 2015 is the host days stay the same. I absolutely believe that, that, that some form of alternative gaming, and again, I don't know if it's going to be in the, in the form of historic racing, if it's going to be in the form of of some type of an impact fee, um, but certainly there, there, there's talk, again, as there is every session, as you can imagine, I think as an industry, um, certainly we should all be um, together and trying to get something done. Uh, as soon as this hearing's over, we should come together as an industry and try to get something done legislatively um, in the veto session. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm confident that something's going to be done. We look at this and say, okay, um, what they're going to do is they're going to take, you know, 56% 50, more host days um, run less and pay less in purses. Um, we, you know, we're talking about um, how, how, how does, um, we're confused by it, quite frankly. We don't understand how, how the industry is going to come together and how, how, the, how Hawthorne survives in, in, in a schedule like that. Um, we, we, we're, we're perplexed by it. In this scenario here, you're talking about taking 106 days away from Hawthorne Racecourse. So if, if you think that Arlington got destroyed by 18 days of dark host, how do you think Hawthorne feels by uh, losing 106 host days? How, how, how does a racetrack survive? We don't, we don't know how that happens. Are you familiar with the term recapture? I am, yes. Okay. Could, could you explain it to me uh, as best as anyone can because no one seems to. <coughs> I, and and it, I apologize if I get it wrong. Um, it, it, my understanding is when they incorporated full cart simulcasting in 1995, it was the difference between live handle and, and current handle. Um, but there's a max dollar amount that one entity can achieve. And as I read the statute, 
the the baseline or the load star is 1995's uh, handle. handle. That's correct. Um, even though that handle is not the reality today. Unfortunately, that's correct. And what happens to the recapture money? What 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 does that do? Where does the money come from, and where does it go? The the money comes out of the purse account, um, and it comes to the the racetrack operator. And if there is uh, too much money taken taken out of the purse account, what happens? Well, it, it would it would decrease the amount of monies that then people would run for, the horsemen would run for. And that that recapture amount is something that this board certifies every January, correct? That's correct. And is there ever any mechanism or procedure or tradition that any of that money is, is, is deferred, is not taken by, by a track, but is used to fund purse accounts? Um, not in the thoroughbred side of the business. I'm the Secretary Treasurer of Teamsters Local 727. And I assume you have people that are working in the racetrack industry, in the horse industry. Almost 100 at all the Illinois racetracks. And I'm here at their specific request to try to explain the devastation any reduction in days would bring to their families. Um, we've seen, all of us, what's happened to this industry. And, you know, we had over 500 members at one time in this industry. And, you know, we continue to shrink and shrink and shrink. And my, my members are telling me they're not going to be able to, to keep this as their job. So I don't know what the tracks actually will do when the starting gate crews and the, the jockeys valets and the colors people and the numbers people and the the parking lot people and all the people that I represent and the other unions represent, you know, God forbid they get to a point where there's no racing at all for months or, you know, there's two days of racing a week. Who can live on two days a week? It's, the impact here is devastating. We've come so close in Springfield to getting slots for the racetracks um, on a number of occasions. Uh, I really believe it's not if it happens, it's when it happens. What other unions are involved? Um, you've got HERE, uh, you've got the IBEW, I think some of them are in the audience today. We have some of our members in the audience today, uh, some of our stewards. Uh, this is something that is, you know, on not only the forefront of their mind, but, but this schedule is scaring the daylights out of, out of all of the union members at the tracks. Which uh, schedule scares the life out of you? All of them. <laughs> no, in particular. We, we, want, we want as many days as humanly possible. These people have to feed their families and raise their families. And, and uh, of the schedules that are submitted to you, the one with the most days is okay. the best Live one days. for us. The race Live track days. closing would be devastating to the unions, right? Devastating. No question. I'm Dick Dutchesaw. I'm chairman of Arlington International Race Course. Uh, <clears throat> I've been chairman since uh, the course was built. By my math, in terms of when you first started in the industry, uh, as a breeder and owner, and then an owner of a, a racing facility, it, it spans more than 60 years, correct? Uh, that's correct. And in, in that 60 years, we've learned uh, that uh, we have to live within our income. We, if we don't do these things, we don't have money to put back into the company. No company can exist unless it's a non-for-profit company, unless it can make enough profit to reinvest back in the organization and improve it. You have to give. You can't be taking all the time. And if you can't be able to give uh, enough, then you're taking. And if you're taking, you're destroying your, your plant and facility. And once that starts down that slope, it's almost impossible to change it. Could you just share with the board briefly, based on your 60 plus years of experience in the Illinois racing industry, uh, the obstacles, the chief obstacles that you see uh, uh, facing the Illinois racing industry right now? Uh, the Illinois racing industry, and I'm speaking from my personal uh, experience and my personal feeling on it, I think is just about ready to collapse. I feel that if we continue for another two years on the fraud program we've been going on for the last 10, 11 years, uh, we won't have a racing industry here. We're constantly uh, moving in a direction which is contrary to any economic situation any business would have. And where you can't keep cutting and cutting and cutting 
and not put anything back and expect to exist very long. You can't have one person or one company uh, supplying another company. If you have one person that's sick uh, and you're giving a blood to or getting blood from a, a healthy person, pretty soon you've killed both person, both people. We believe that this industry, unless there's radical change and change right now, it's not going to exist for more than two years. Or if it does exist, it will get to the county fair B type circuit racing. Uh, we have uh, studied this and studied it. Uh, we have several different programs that uh, we would like to uh, have considered going down the line. Uh, one program that we uh, <coughs> talked about, you just heard uh, the, from the Southern Illinois uh, track, they can handle everything that we had heard about this morning, they say they would be losing. We only have about 25% of our horses come over from uh, Hawthorne. The other 75 come from around the states the various different states. Uh, we, we believe that unless there's a complete downsizing and shrinking of, of the operations within the state, we're all going to have very serious trouble. You can only cut the pie in so many ways. And right now, we have to stop. We have to understand that we have to rebuild that pie. And if we don't rebuild that pie, none of us are going to have anything to live on. Because when that slice gets down too thin, it's not going to satisfy anyone's appetite and we're going to lose an industry. What we have to understand, and a lot of us don't always understand it, the only real product we sell is a mutual ticket. And all the things we do, the peanuts, popcorn, parking that we have are to make it more convenient and help people come to the track and buy mutual tickets. Because the mutual ticket, when it started at $2, is still two dollars so we have to find ways and different gimmicks and different ways to sell more mutual tickets and you only do that with quality if we don't have the purse money if we don't have the uh, structure to the physical structure to make everyone feel comfortable we aren't going to have people come to our show you can have the best theater in the world but if you don't have a good play to put in it you aren't going to exist but if hawthorne's request is granted that red bar, that Armageddon bar, is what happens at Arlington International Race Course. Purses will drop down to 100,000 a day. We will no longer be able to attract the number of horses needed to, to, to run our race meet. Breeders will leave the state. Two of the top breeders in the state, the Blocks and the Terras, have told us, if your purses drop below where they're at this year, we're not coming back. We've got to find another place to go. And you might even see us leaving this fall because purses are so low, we can't afford to race here anymore. We can't lose these people because once they go, they're going to go in other states and start breeding. And they're tied to those states. If we start selling on November 1st, and we don't know on May 2nd whether we're going to have enough horses to fill the race, what do we tell them, those folks? Is it in the best interest of the public to buy a product and then you've got to turn away or you've got to cancel? Are you going to say, we're only going to race five races today? instead of the nine or we're only going to race uh, five uh, five races with five horse fields that's what we are facing and what all our data and our analysis shows us when we run races at a hundred thousand dollars a day I don't even know that we could run a race meet at a hundred thousand dollars a day where are the horses going to come from if you take the full population of horses at Hawthorne it's still not enough to fill races at Arlington. If we canceled all our stakes races, it still wouldn't get us up to where we would be. I mean, it would just be one of the most illogical things we can do. Despite the misconception that the spring meet feeds Arlington's race meet, this chart shows that that's not exactly the case. It does contribute, but on a very small level. 75% of our horses come from tracks other than Hawthorne. What do you charge? A couple of dollars? What's it cost to get into Arlington? Uh, that depends if whether you get a discounted admission or well, what type just, of package you buy. Say you just walk up and I wanted to get into Arlington. General right? admission is eight dollars. And okay. how much of that eight dollars goes to the state of Illinois? Uh, I believe it's a fifteen cent admission tax. And the seven dollars and eighty-five cents, any of that go to purses? 
No, that's used to uh, offset the, the overhead of keeping a world-class facility in operation and a, a backstretch up in, uh, in, in condition that is superior to any other racetrack or any other facility. On May 2nd, would you be surprised to know that you had 66 entries? That sounds about right. Okay. So, would you also be surprised that of those 66 entries, 52 ran at Hawthorne in their last race? Would that surprise you? No, if you're taking out a single day, no. Okay. Would it surprise you Thursday, May 8th? That of 62 horses that were honored, 54 last ran at Hawthorne. Would that surprise you? No. Oh. Maybe then you can look at all the programs through May, and you'll see that it's about 70% of the horses that ran at, at Arlington started at Hawthorne in their last race. You can do that later and get back to me on it if you would. Are you advocating that there be no spring meet? Absolutely not. What is it about Hawthorne's dates request that, that directly lowers the Illinois purses at Arlington? It's the amount of money that is earned by dark time. We requested, um, I think it uh, was uh, uh, from January 1st through August, I'm sorry, through March 15th and November 15th through the end of the year that dark time money is an equivalent of about that seven million that gets us, maybe six and a half million that gets us to where the impact fee has dropped off. If there is no dark time as you know, was shown in Hawthorne's schedule or just those few weeks, this is where we would be at. If we had to run a 79 day race meet May through September with 18 days of dark time, our projected purses are around $105,000 a day. It's my understanding, and maybe I'm wrong, uh, has the industry nationally um, improved tremendously or is it on a downward slide? Every study uh, that, that we've seen and published reports is showing that uh, it is on a downward decline. Everywhere? Yes. Okay, so my question is, um, apparently the board of, of giving the 2013 and 2014 dates, the Illinois Racing Board, is responsible for this decline because in your letter you say that it destroyed the growth of the industry. But we did that? Um, I, I don't think that is directly related to that. I think that is referring to the board's decisions over a period of time that there has not been a plan for racing and the racetracks have always just kind of arm wrestled over race dates. What we had hoped is that we, the tracks, could work along with the racing board in developing a long-term plan for the viability of racing. Okay, uh, to quote um, this letter of July 31st, signed by you, uh, the traditional thoroughbred race schedule and the shift in the host time status in 2013 and the race schedule destroyed the growth of the industry. I don't believe that it led to the growth of the industry. It destroyed it. But what I'm saying is did we just destroy it in Illinois or did we destroy it everywhere? Uh, that particular uh, comment was just to Illinois. I'm sorry? Not to be self-aggrandizing that we could possibly destroy it everywhere. I mean, that's, that's a pretty rough statement. Yes, I, I guess those words chosen at the time that you're drafting your application and you're fighting for your life, you're fighting for the jobs for, uh, for people uh, in the state, uh, sometimes you become emotional. And I think that was maybe a bad decision to use those words because it was maybe written out of emotion. And, I think I've learned from my experience, as many of us have, when we make emotional decisions, they're usually not very good. So I apologize for the emotion put into that. I think that extends to my deep care for this industry and my deep desire for it to work. So any offense, uh, I apologize for that, for using emotion rather than business sense. Is Arlington pursuing um, alternate sources of revenue um, to make up for, for that impact fee, other than 
Hawthorne's dark days? Are you are you looking for anything else to make up that funding? Like well, we're very much bill. pursuing ADW. We're aggressively pursuing ADW. We're marketing and promoting Illinois racing so that our inner track facilities are full, that our ADW platforms have as many customers uh, as possible and enticing them with different promotions from uh, certain uh, types of, of wagers with lower takeout so that we drive up the purse money. But there are very limited sources of revenue for purse money and that's what we're trying to set forth before you today is explain this very limited of resources and the dark time produces the majority of that revenue to be able to put back into purses. Are you familiar with the, um, the mechanism known as recapture? Yes, I am. And could you describe it to me? I want to hear everyone's yes. version. Um, in 1995, when uh, legislation was passed for full card simulcasting, there was a, a lot of dialogue over what that impact would be on the live racing product. And the tracks were saying, no, we can't do this. And the horsemen came along and said, well, we're going to give you an assurance. We will use 1994 as, as the year of measure. And whatever harm or impact you suffer by that will come out of the purse account or recapture. We have not advocating for eliminating a spring meet at Hawthorne, but if they say we don't get our schedule and we can't run, we will work with Fairmont and ensure that those horses have a place to go and a place to race here in the state of Illinois, either at Fairmont or at Arlington, a combination. We'd have to work out those, those details and ensure that uh, you know, the, 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 the horsemen uh, have a place to race that can't move to another state. We'll absolutely, we'll take those 600 horses and take care of them. As the executive director, I'm, I'm here as the spokesman for the ITHA Board of Directors. Uh, it's a 13 member owner trainer group that represents all the owners and trainers that race at both Arlington and Hawthorne. On a vote of 11 to one, one of our board members was not present. Uh, the position statement is, the ITHA would like to see a comparable award of dates by the IRB for thoroughbred racing at Arlington and Hawthorne in 2015, as was awarded in 2014. I think what I heard you say is you'd like to keep the racing schedule, the status quo. And I, uh, That's another way of saying it. Okay, I just we came up with the words. We, 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 we talked about these words very carefully, and no changes, the words we right. said is status it's quo. Esen essentially status quo. Thank you. You uh, testified in support of the reduction of the live racing at Hawthorne in the fall this year, correct? Yes. If uh, Arlington's uh, overnight purses drop to 105, did you secure commitments from your members that they will not leave the state of Illinois? That's never been posed to them, as far as I know. Okay. Did you do any polling of the members with respect to the issue other than the 13 people that voted that you described? Well, do I personally talk to people? Yes, I personally talk to people. Is there any written poll? Was an email sent out? Was SurveyMonkey used? Was anything like that um, employed in terms of documenting the number of horsemen? I think you said you represent how many, uh, according to? I didn't say. OK. H how many do you purport to represent? At any one time, there's upwards of 2,000 owners and trainers. No rules currently exist to establish what organization represents the, the largest number of horsemen in Illinois, correct? I'm not, I don't understand the question. Sure. Isn't one of the proposals before the board right now that was just discussed at the August board meeting that there are no rules to establish where organization represents the largest number of horsemen in Illinois and that's being uh, investigated no. and analyzed by the board? No, that's not true. I, There's I, I, I would object at this point. I don't know what relevance this has to the dates hearing right now, and I, it's beyond the scope of the direct. I, or the I just thought I heard him say that he's a spokesman on behalf of 2,000 people, and I just want to understand what that. What, what I said was I'm a spokesman on behalf of the board of directors. Just the 13 people that spoke. And right? for, they. For the record, it's overruled, and now goes to the next question. Was there any data that you reviewed in terms of whether or not uh, the number of horsemen that would leave the state of Illinois if Arlington's purse were to drop below 120 average overnight. The Board of Directors utilized data from the purse reports prepared by Arlington and our numbers don't support the numbers you're giving us. Did anybody commit to staying in Illinois as part of that discussion? Yes, at, at, at the numbers that we believe Arlington will run for, depending on uh, how they uh, 
handle uh, stakes next year? Uh, yes. So you're purporting to cut stakes, right? I'm not purporting anything. Okay. Have you ever operated uh, a racetrack, Mr. Berman? Have I ever operated a racetrack? Yes. No. Do you have to support overnights? Um, and Prudent cuts the stake schedule will probably be necessary to support overnights, which drive the handle. Are you familiar with the term recapture? Yes. And what do you understand it to be? I thought you might ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought, up, I brought up the IRB uh, annual report. Shall I read it? Well, just tell me, tell me what, you, what your interpretation well. of it is. My interpretation, my interpretation is, is my interpretation on. is $240 million of purses have come out of the purse account and, and gone to the tracks since it was instituted. And it was supposedly to recompense the racetracks for lost income when they started uh, uh, full card simulcasting. 